Okay, good. So let me start. I hope the video is on. Uh, Todd, like, thank you for the information. Uh, I, it was off at the beginning, now I turned it on. So, uh, welcoming community uh, strengthens the Apache way. Uh, that's the uh, part, that's the talk I'm, I'm going to give today. A uh, few words about myself. I'm uh, Jarek Potyuk. I'm a PMC member and committer at Apache Airflow, uh, and also principal software engineer at Polydia. You can reach me at potyuk at apache.org. Um, and uh, what's going to be in the talk? So first of all, I'm going to show, show you a sh very short uh, journey about the airflow over the last two years. That's where I joined the project two years ago. It's almost like exactly two years now. Uh, and I will explain what we did for the contributors. That's the main part of what we have done. But also, like the, the big part is, uh, like I've learned over the time that uh, doing stuff for the contributors, making the community more welcoming for contributors is not the only thing that we should do. The community is much bigger than just contributors. And this is, this is like the, the second part of the talk that I'm going to give. Uh, so I, I'll try to explain what the community is and what we have done to make the community more welcoming for not only for contributors, but also for, for, for all the other participants, all the other community members. Uh, and like how the Apache way plays uh, the role in, in all of that. Uh, so first, a few words about the Apache Airflow story. For those who do not know, Apache Airflow uh, yeah, is a platform to programmatically alter and schedule and monitor workflows. We have this beautiful new logo. Uh, oh, it's not that new, actually. Um, and the story of Apache Airflow, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> The story of Apache Air Airflow, it started uh, in 2014 when it was uh, started in Airbnb and it was incubated to Apache uh, Software Foundation in uh, in 2016. Uh, then, it, as you see, uh, like initially the, the, there were, uh, were a lot of commits, a lot of like uh, changes to it. After it was contributed, it faded out a little bit and then it started to grow and, and, and grows all the time since then. And this. For me, it's a sign also, also of a very healthy project that we are we are running because like we, we see a lot a lot of uh, uh, increase in that. So in 2019, uh, Apache Airflow graduated to uh, uh, to be top level project, and that was the time that I was, I was already in the project because like this is my story in uh, with Apache Airflow. I joined uh, the project like I started my first commit was uh, merged or was created 29th of September 2018. Uh, then uh, the Airflow became a top-level project. I became a committer in March. Then, uh, then I became a, a Google Season of Doc mentor. I will tell about that a little bit later. Uh, then I became a PMC. Then I became host outreach mentor. So a lot of the work that I was doing was about making the uh, community more uh, welcoming for the contributors. Uh, uh, this is the, the biggest part of the presentation today that I'm going to give. And a little bit overview of the of what happened there, just to give a little bit of kind of where we are right now. So uh, when I joined, when when I joined, we, it was 1.10.0 version, and then we released a number of released uh, releases since then. Uh, after the top level project, all of them in the 1.10 range, but all the time in the parallel, we were also working on Airflow 2.0 version, and it's going to come very soon. Uh, we plan it for this, the, the the last quarter of 2020. Uh, in the meantime. A lot of things happened, like we have a new logo, we have a new site. So the, it looks like the, the, the project was actually maturing over the over the over the way because like we started like simple website or simple document site. Now we have uh, we improved our branding, we added the new site, and, and and it's becoming really mature product. And with 2.0, we are really targeting to be like really really mature product and mature project. And few words before we go further about like what the community is because we hear a lot of the words about like community, what is the community? And I came to this um, uh, uh, this conclusion, uh, like no, initially when I when I was uh, uh, working with Airflow, I thought community more like contributors only, like people who are contributing the code. But I think community is, is more than that. Generally, communities are the people. 
and uh, people have some motivation. So uh, what I tried to do here, uh, and that's kind of my personal view on that, like what kind of different motivations people have when they're contributing, were becoming parts of the community. And a lot of that was also covered by uh, the previous talk on the community track, track by, by Marilla Kranz. She was talking about economics, about vendor neutrality. And, and actually she, she, she brought up the, the Apache Airflow as an example, uh, that was cool. Uh, but there are like different players in the in this, and for me that was really interesting to understand like what uh, what what are those uh, players and what are these motivations. So for the contributors, most of the contributors are actual users. They like to give back to the community. They build portfolio for their own like reputation or whatever status they want to achieve. Uh, for them, open source is, is really cool. And some of the contributors get paid for their contributors, especially if they, uh, they have some heavy, uh, they work for some vendors. Uh, and um, that's like the next stage. So like uh, there are plenty of, a lot of com uh, contributors we have. We have much smaller group of maintainers and committers, and they have different motivation than, than uh, regular committers, yeah? uh, regular contributors. So they are usually either heavy users of the product or work in the companies that are providing some products or services or, or, or for the project. Uh, they often get paid to contribute uh, because you really need a lot of time in order to, to become a committer maintainer. So you need to spend a lot of time. So a lot of, lot of, the, lots of that, that time is being paid by somebody. Uh, and genuinely, genuinely care about the project. So they, they, they're really involved emotionally. They're really, really involved not only because of the history, but, uh, but also like an, an, an emotional. And often, and that's that's my experience at least, lots of those committers are actually spending their own, a lot of their own time uh, on contributing. Not So they are paid part of the time they do, but a lot of the time they are contributing on top of that from their own personal time. Uh, and a lot of the, those contributors, they do care about the software craftsmanship, uh, especially the code contributors because they are or code committers because they are non-code committers as well. They also care about the software craftsmanship, but I'm, I'm focusing more on the on the code side uh, at this time. And there are also PMCs. And from my point of view, like uh, the, the role of the PMC is not always about like making decisions on a daily basis in the project. Uh, it's more about like caring about the Apache way uh, uh, genuinely care about the project itself as well. I mean, they they accepted to be PMCs for the project. Uh, they have some legal responsibility because, like, this is like the when you become PMC and you vote on releases, uh, you actually have some legal uh, uh, responsibilities. And then uh, they are also the nice thing that I didn't know because before I came became an, a, a PMC. Like the, the ASF identifies them from if they follow Apache Way. So if you follow the Apache Way of the PMC, uh, if any, anybody sees uh, the, the project or the project or like if you if any harm is made, uh, the Apache Software Foundation takes the uh, the uh, not the blame. Like they they, they they take care about that. So this this is actually pretty cool. So is that all? I mean, not really, like because uh, this, those are people who create the product, but community is much more than that. Uh, first of all, we have users and they are definitely like part of the community uh, because, uh, and what their motivation is, like they, they, they want to alter workflows in our case, they want to execute them, operate, and Airflow is a good fit for them. So this these are the motivations of the users uh, becoming part of our community. Uh, and, uh, there are also some companies that are actually using Airflow. And this is like the, like you, the Airflow, for example, is like, it's, it's a corporate or, or enterprise level product uh, used by big enterprises. And lots of companies are actually using it. Uh, we have like more than four, 400, almost 400 people, like uh, companies uh, in the in the wild uh, documentation we have who is using Airflow. And those companies, they need to orchestrate works, workflows. They need to empower their teams to how to use the Airflow. They want to avoid vendor locking. This is often what we hear. This is like Apache software product. We know it's going to be like, it's neutral. We can, it's not it's not vendor uh, um, managed or vendor, independent. It's, it's actually vendor, vendor neutral. Uh, and sometimes they have some serious principles, security principles, rules to follow. Uh, and since open source is the world, and we've learned that uh, open source is being used more and more frequently in those enterprises, uh, they also care about open source and learn how to use open source. Uh, but also uh, another player and an important one uh, are companies from the ecosystem. So the, the companies that are actually uh, uh, 
using the Airflow for, for example, as a service. Uh, they do business with Airflow, like like my company. Like we just have uh, we are a software house that contributes to Airflow, and our customers are paying us to be like to contribute to Airflow and be good uh, citizens and good part of the community. Uh, and we want to Airflow to grow as those companies. They want Airflow to grow because they 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 make their business on top of that. They and they have to understand open source rules, and they do. Uh, and they are important. They want to be important players in the community. They want to be recognized. They like they want to be uh, uh, present in the community. But also they have some other motivations like the VC funding behind or competition. They they have a little bit different motivation. Like every 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 group that I was talking about, the, 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 they have a little bit different motivations, and we have to take those motivations uh, uh, into account. The uh, this is the report. Like, uh, if you haven't seen that, uh, you should definitely take a look at that. Something that uh, Tomek actually, who is watching the talk here, he, he he drew my attention to that. There was this Axel report about open source, how it plays out in the corporate environment. And ASF is like enterprise friendly or or uh, or commercial friendly, and there are lots of companies built on top of uh, uh, or with the next to the the open source projects and there are some challenges and some important stuff uh, there like what are the motivations what are the problems to solve like go and read that and actually that made me think that we have to in, in this presentation that we have to talk about that like what is the uh, motivations of all those different players and also what uh, what are the uh, ways how to make the software the the the, the project we have more welcoming to everyone in the community to users contributors uh, committers pmcs uh, companies using airflow and companies who are building ecosystem around airflow so our community has to be welcoming to everyone actually this is my this is the premise and a few words about the, the, the awesome uh, ecosystem so we have astronomer polydia google cloud those are the most uh, the, the most important players and i think they are very important to make the make sure that uh, the project is running that there are people who there are some people actually are being paid by those companies uh, who are contributing to the to the uh, to to Airflow, and this is great because the Airflow can grow, and and that's fantastic. And it's great to have this kind of uh, the, 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 these players who understand the open source rules and, and play by the rules. So this is this is actually cool. Uh, now I'm going to talk about this more welcome more welcoming community that we have done uh, for the contributors. This was my initial understanding that. Making community more welcoming for it's making it more welcoming for contributors only. Uh, if you can read, uh, uh, if you if you read like there is a success of Apache, at Apache blog which I wrote about it. There is a Feathercast video also uh, recorded with Rich uh, uh, where I was talking about. And initially when I recorded that, that was not not so long time ago. I thought like yeah, this is for, like this is what we've done. Like make our community stronger. This these are the parts that that I was part of. Like we make it easier to start contributing to Airflow, to understand developer documentation, removing barriers to contribute, and increase diversity for contributors. This is like that was like my thinking when I joined the project and, and started to understand it that this is making the project more welcoming. Is this and how we achieve that? So this is like where contributors are first and forefront, like the most important part for me, and that that was like biggest part of what I was doing uh, for the last two years in terms of this making more community uh, welcoming. So we've done a successful uh, outreach internship. So if you know, don't know outreach, this is they support diversity in open source and free software. They allow uh, people who cannot take part usually uh, normally with their uh, uh, to contribute to open source. They pay them for the internships, like. In our case, that was a project for REST API that we had to develop for, for our 2.0 release. We have two interns, Ephraim and Omair. Uh, um, Ephraim was from Nigeria, Omair from India. Uh, together with them, we successfully developed the APIs. Uh, and finally, as well, and this is fantastic, but like, again, like our community is, is great. Like the uh, Ephraim was hired by Astronomer at the end. Uh, and, and, and that's great result and outcome of this not only uh, good software uh, they got paid and people found found work as well that, that's 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 really great and fantastic uh, one thing that uh, I was mostly involved in and I wanted to talk like, like how we made the, the project more approachable for contributors we developed a contributor development environment 
uh, and the tagline was it's a breeze to contribute to airflow so it's called a breeze so it's a tool to help to start very quickly with development of apache airflow so literally you set up the development environment environment in minutes you have a reproducible ci environment it's, it's mainly a glorified bash script without the complete and it uses docker compose under the hood so like uh, I mean, th those are technical details. Uh, I've recorded a video showing how to use it. Um, as a result of that, we have a better, most faster and more stable CI. And actually, after like one and a half years of development, it when I was persistent enough to say like, this is needed, this is needed, we need it, or, like, this is really useful. Uh, and I implemented it uh, gradually. Uh, after a few uh, months or years, actually, I started to get uh, this kind of feedback from people uh, like that, that's it's truly a breeze to start working with airflow it's like uh, for someone new like it's it's really awesome to start with like the effort the put etc so like this is like great to hear it from new contributors uh, and even like the last thing that the, the, there is a new blog post which is just released today quickly set up airflow for development with breeze for for a new new member of the community who started contributing contributed something to airflow and he wrote a blog post about that as well how easy it is to start. So that was like, I think that was really, really great to make the community more welcoming for contributors. Uh, we've improved a lot of uh, our documentation for contributors. So uh, in 2019, 20, we've done, we've done a lot of work to make uh, to make the documentation more approachable. So uh, we have we were part of Google Season of Docs uh, 2019. I was a mentor there uh, together with uh, uh, with few other people like Ash from our community. He was another mentor. Uh, there was like uh, two projects improving documentation for contributors and improving description for architecture done by Elena and Kartik. Uh, and we've done a lot of improvement uh, in improvements in our documentation in general uh, to make it really really more approachable for customers. And Camille and Caxil, they were like great in, in contributing those in those uh, those things but not everything looks that good uh, or is that good as we wanted it to be so we found uh, uh, we found out that like we have a really comprehensive documentation but it's it might be quite a bit overwhelming initially for somebody who wants to be a new contributor so it looks like at the uh, uh, there is the, there is there is a great talk uh, by Vanessa from new contributor uh, at Airflow Summit. So I invited Vanessa to speak at the Airflow Summit. We were organizing it, and she gave a fantastic talk that you, I'm, I really encourage you to 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 look at. And actually, there there is one like that was very difficult talk to me for me because I found out that my way of communicating was actually seen as patronizing. And that was not really good experience. Uh, like, uh, but I've learned a lot that actually for people who are new, who are coming to the uh, um, to the community, it's much more important to be like very welcoming. So, uh, a result of that, like the the best part of the talk from Vanessa is like a friend of my Camille. He was like that's his nickname, uh, his his logo, his uh, his avatar, it's Elmo. So like the Vanessa was be like Elmo because the like, Camille was like so. Uh, empathetic and so really helpful and we've learned that like the documentation is not always very helpful uh, and uh, it's like if a lot of that documentation is uh, is important but it also should be approachable and and finally i mean uh, some uh, few weeks ago literally uh, there was a user who actually uh, said that i mean yeah, the documentation is, is a little bit overwhelming for me. It's, it's great, it's fantastic to find it, but it's difficult to find it. And uh, he actually uh, volunteered to help with that. And this is the, the, the great thing that we achieved. Like we have our new users coming to, to, to our project and they are saying, yeah, it's fantastic documentation. It, little, it needs uh, some restructuring to make it easier. And I think it's the best thing, like the, the user who comes and makes the documentation easier. He's like the the kind of best uh, person who can write the documentation. And, and we're on the way of, of, of improving this documentation in this way. But we've also done a, a number of different things. We've, uh, we've also uh, run some workshops for new contributors. And that was, that was also a very useful thing to make it welcoming for more contributors. So together with Tomek, Tomek is listening to the talk I see. Uh, we already run three editions of, of uh, workshops where we invited people to um, 
uh, make first contribution to the airflow. We have uh, a format for that. We have all the materials which we share. Uh, and we are actually actually going to run two more workshops in October uh, together with the Hacktoberfest. Uh, so we do do it under the Hacktoberfest uh, umbrella as well. Uh, and and that, that was really great to uh, uh, that other people like the same Patrick who, who contributed documentation or com is going to contribute the documentation. He said, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to organize another Hacktoberfest event after that, after getting all the materials. So it, it looks like the, the, the whole effort we put there to, to it, it really works. And 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 people are uh, picking up from even like helping others to understand our documentation. And that's 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 really fantastic. But there is more. There's much more than that. So I think the the the, the point that I want to make, the, the big point that I want to make, that the, the big foundation for all this uh, ma making things more welcoming and how to make the uh, the the project more welcoming uh, is the Apache way. So the Apache way is really uh, uh, the, the underlying uh, rules and principles that we all should take into account, and we do. Like the, this is this is the the, the thing that we are uh, all the time trying to apply to our work. Uh, you know all this uh, earned authority and all the other uh, all the other uh, uh, principles that, that are guiding the Apache way, and this is really the foundation that we build on, and that helps us to make decisions on how we are making the community uh, more welcoming. Uh, so so far, I mean, we were talking about contributors, uh, so this is the part that I was mostly involved in, but there are also other um, other members of the community, as I mentioned. So first of all, users, like how to make the community more welcoming for the users, because it, it's needed, like in order to, for community to thrive, you need to have users and they have to be engaged. Uh, so what we do, like we do better performance, Ash and Camille, they're working, they were working on that. Uh, functional DAC programming, many, many more new features, easier dependency management, fully functional API, refreshed UI. Uh, and that's an example of a, Kind of modification in the, in the UI that we've made now to make it more kind of appealing for our users. We've all done that with the users in our thinking, like what the users might want to get from uh, from Airflow to zero. And it's coming. Uh, it's going to be really great release, like responding to a lot of features, requests, and and asks from our users. Uh, and it's coming soon, the, the, uh, before the end of the year. But there is another thing we've done for Airflow Summit uh, for 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 our users. We've done an Airflow Summit summit also online because of the pandemic. It was like six thousand attendees, attendees, forty three talks, nine meetups uh, from Asia, Europe, US, and a variety of talks, mostly targeted for the users. And this was also our contribution to uh, to make the users more aware of what other users are doing and learn from them. And this this was really fantastic fantastic way to make our community more welcoming uh, for users because now they can watch all the talks and see how they can use Airflow and we have a whole playlist on YouTube and uh, go and watch if you are interested in Airflow because that's that's a fantastic learning for everyone. Uh, so I'd like to thank uh, here all the organizers. They are mostly PMCs or committers in in Airflow uh, in Airflow project. Uh, and also we had uh, Pedro and Mara from uh, from Software Guru, which is an external company that that organizes the whole event. It was fantastic, and that was really great uh, contribution to our users. Um, uh, but there is this this famous quote from John Kennedy. So I think it's also. Uh, a right thing to ask what the users can do for for us. So if we are talking about like what we're giving to the users, it's also like what do we get from those users as a community, as everyone in the community. So we want more engagement from them. Uh, like for example, the doc improvement that I was talking about. Like from users, they are the best. Uh, we want uh, and those user users can then be really helpful in that. When they are testing and raising reproducible issues. Uh, when the 2.0 is going to be out, we are going to need heavy testing by the users. And then we will encourage them a lot to come and like, tell us, like, this doesn't work, or this is the problem, etc. cetera. Uh, well, yeah, we want some users to turn into contributors. I mean, uh, this is this is like why contributor workshops are mostly also like users of Airflow when they are coming. They, they want to become contributors, and we want that, like, for small bug fixes, contributing own features they do, or improving the documentation. This is like fantastic contribution that you can make. 
Uh, but also from users, we expect that to be sensitive to other community member expectations so that to understand that committers all so, sometimes do not have enough time to respond quickly, etc. But I think this is, is really like where uh, the, uh, the, the balance is between like what we give to the, to the users and what we get from them. Uh, so the users using Airflow, that's the, uh, that's the second uh, group that I covered. Uh, but committers, what do committers, what's the motivation of the, or what, 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 what's, uh, what do we do for committers, like to make this more welcoming for new committers as well, so for or people who already are committers or are going to become a new committers. Uh, so like we have a big pain, like we are maintaining 1.10 right now, and that's a big pain for all the committers. Uh, and we want to get rid of that by introducing 2.0 and, and introducing like six months uh, period where we will be maintaining it and that's gone. Uh, for maintenance, at least. Uh, and yeah, we want to move to 2.0 as fast as possible, not faster, because we also don't want to stress those committers too much. Uh, and we, like, we've introduced a, introduced a lot of actually very cool things for the committers to be able to be more happy with the code they create and uh, more productive in what they do. So, like, we moved from Python 3.6, uh, from Python 2.3 to 3.6 to plus only. Uh, we've added some automated static checks and pre commits, which means that there is less re review overhead because the, a lot of the commits are actually being verified by uh, automatically. Uh, we have a better structured, nicer, easier to read code, uh, or better documented code as well. Uh, and we removed some duplicated feature, which is actually great uh, because you don't have to maintain those things which are not or very rarely used. So that's that's what we do for, for the committers. Uh, what do we do? For contributor, for for others, so company. Uh, um, oh, sorry, no, not this direction. So companies using Airflow. So uh, I think it's an important important piece that we are working on right now and contributed some of that recently is like addressing more needs of enterprise users. So our companies using Airflow are mostly enterprises. Um, so we've introduced a lot of things like uh, uh, official Docker images they can use to build their own images. Uh, official Helm charts that we are going to release uh, sometimes along the 2.0 release, most likely. We have a secure and controlled build of those binary packages. So this is the, so something that um, that is, is really important for some of the enterprise users. They want to be able to uh, make sure that what they build and release internally fits their security practices. Uh, we want to do a very straightforward communication about the year 2.0, like what do you expect, when do you expect the 2.0 to, to be out? Uh, and something that we also think about, like easy migration to 2.0. So like we introduce automated checks and, and ways how you, you can automatically verify if, uh, if you are actually ready to do the 2.0 migration. Part of it is like backport packages which we released. So those backport packages are the way for the uh, existing users to migrate to the new way how Airflow communicates with the external world without the migrating and migrating to 2.0 afterwards. So we bring a big part of 2.0 back to the 1.10 so that they can actually start using it before they migrate, which makes the migration much, much easier. And automated upgrade check, which I mentioned already. But also, uh, this, is the, the, this goes two ways again. So what the companies can do. So the companies can uh, for Airflow community. So they can become the part of the community and be more active uh, in, it, in it by allowing their people to help us, it, which means basically like paying for their time uh, they spend on contributing. This is, this is really important uh, that people uh, who uh, work in companies using Airflow, that actually they, uh, if they contribute, they, they, that's, that they should do it on, on company time, many in, uh, quite often. Uh, some companies that we know of that are using Airflow, they're building their own OSS teams, uh, like comp uh, teams inside that have focus on OSS software or open source software and contributing to it. Like, so like define, like they change their own structure internally to be able to both use and contribute at the same time to open source software. And that's, that's, uh, that's really great, I think. Uh, some companies have a lot of code that they maintain for their own purpose and Contributing that code, like recently we had them some code from Twitter, from from other companies uh, that are being contributed uh, to Airflow, uh, and and this is a really great contribution those companies can can make. Uh, 
uh, yeah, they can test and raise issues, of course, and have realistic expectations about like what we are going to deliver when, and like you know, uh, be be sometimes patient, waiting to, uh, until uh, some features are released. Uh, and again, be sensitive to to other community members' needs, motivations, expectations, because the whole community has all the different players in place. So that's the companies using Airflow. What the PMCs? Uh, what do we do for PMCs? Uh, yeah, we, we make sure we follow the Apache way. So like this is the the, the kind of like the focus of, of PMCs. Like you have to just it's like big big responsibility of PMCs to uh, make sure that the, the the project is following Apache way. Uh, uh, we have some discussions about release, releasing the code. So just an example of what uh, what I'm working on recently, uh, and I hope some Apache Software Foundation supporting that is to get some official ASF release policy on on binary and convenience, con convenience packages. They are a bit blurry, like how to release Docker images and hand charts is not exactly well uh, described and reflected in the current release policies. But I'm I'm trying to help that so that both our PMC and, and other PMCs can have more clarity on that. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help on that and start a discussion on the community and propose some update to the policy. So this is this is the like kind of the, the, the make the, the community more welcoming for PMCs also. Uh, and companies from the ecosystem, yeah? So what, what do we do from those companies? We assume all the good intentions that the companies have that, that are uh, contributing. We make sure that the 2.0 is out quickly and as quickly as we can. Uh, this is this is really important. Uh, we try to deliver on the promises we make. Uh, that's not always easy. Uh, things are changing, are hectic uh, in in some in some ways sometimes. But uh, but we, and and in open source software, you never are sure when things are ready. But when we uh, we just try to make sure that we keep our promises, uh, we we need to understand the motivation of those uh, those companies which are trying to contribute the code and trying to sponsor people who are working on it uh, or pay for their time. Uh, listen to the plans they have uh, so that we can also respond to them because they are so important to uh, to keep the, the the community going. Um, yeah. So again works in both directions so the companies uh, from ecosystem they can do they can allow their people to be fully immersed in the community so just you know like be part of the community and spend their time on community stuff this is super important like those companies that that are the core of the oss uh like the, this is also part of the of the of the report that i was showing before the axel report like one of the things that is super important like make sure you have people that are really into the community and working in the community uh, they are part of your team and let them do the community work, not only the work that you want to do. Uh, the Because then it's much more valuable for the community as a whole. Uh, they should care about all the community members, so all the different groups that I was talking about. Uh, provide transparent communication, be clear about the intentions they have. And again, be sensitive to other community members' needs, motivations, and expectations. So that's uh, this is this is all... Uh, and and just to summarize this all, like this is uh, this uh, this all works uh, only when uh, all of this falls in place. So like everyone's motivation, everyone's motivation is taken into account, and everyone's uh, uh, expectations are uh, uh, are fulfilled. Uh, and the learning I have is that. Uh, the community over code is much. Uh, uh, the community over code is important, and community is much more complex than I thought initially. So I thought initially about community as contributors, but actually there are many, many different players. They have different motivations and different expectations, and we should cater to, 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 to all of them. And it's super complex, super difficult how to make sure that those things are are, are handled well. And I think Merle was talking a lot about the vendor neutrality in the previous talk, and that that's that's part of it. So I'm, uh, I think that was a really great talk that. Uh, that we've heard from from Merlin, uh, and important is like the, uh, the, the there are important some important steps. So like the, the it's important that there are diff diversity in the leadership. So different people in the leadership they have different kind of focus on different areas. Uh, so uh, some people more focus on contributors, some people on the company, some people on, on PMCs because it's very difficult to focus on all of that at the same time. Uh, we should be welcoming all of those uh, expectations and all of the motivations and all of the community members. We should have time to all of those uh, uh, groups of, of community. Uh, and Abajue way is the, the way how to guide our decisions. I think this is this is super important. Like this is a foundation for everything that 
uh, uh, that makes a successful community welcoming project. Okay, question, if there are some questions, how much of an impact do you think programming languages plays in driving community contributions? Will Apache Airflow be what it is today if it's written in Go, for example? I think no, because like uh, Apache uh, Airflow, uh, I mean, and yes, I think it influences it, and I think, uh, it does influence the direction, especially like in, in case of Airflow. Um, uh, Python was chosen as a data science language, and it's great that it's like all Python. This is the main main driver factor. Like everything in Airflow is Python, and this is super important for the community of data scientists. Did you face any problems of existing committers not being available to mentor, help out new contributors? For example, tickets without review feedback for a long time, components. How did you improve that low bus factor? Uh, Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, like every community, probably we do face it from time to time. We try to uh, work our, or try to um, provide this kind of like uh, workshops and training for new contributors, telling them how to make sure that the contribution they make are valuable and they are quickly going through. Uh, because that's also that's important to know how how the whole community plays. We do have a. Some areas which need more kind of uh, spread out expertise and help. That's for sure. That's something that we are continuously working on. It's rather difficult to to, uh, uh, to pinpoint uh, specific examples and find um, a good uh, uh, yeah a good a good answer how to exactly do that. Uh, but. Uh, um, I I, th I think what one thing that we've done, and that's that's an important thing, and that's something that Camille, where the friend of mine I was talking about, introduced. Like we actually uh, invite a lot of people to solve the problem by themselves, and we help them. And I think that helps a lot, rather than them like coming with a problem uh, and somebody else some comes with a solution, but somebody who comes with a problem comes with a solution as well, and we are guiding them uh, along the way, because then those people turn into experts as well. And this this actually helps, and we we are trying to build uh, the place in our Slack space. Troubleshooting is like this play place where where people are helping each other, uh, and this is this is actually the the best way how you can uh, build the knowledge base uh, among the users, so that they are asking questions, get answers, and then they answer other people's questions similar to that. I think this is the important one. Uh, in, to know if uh, it would be interesting to know if COVID has increased decreased community contribution in any way. Uh, mm, uh, I haven't checked that. I, it's very very hard to say. Uh, myself, I, I I will start. I start contributing more. That's for sure because I uh, I spend more time sitting in front of the computer. Basically, um, what are the dates for the contributor workshops in October? <laughs> they are being announced, and I think it's going to be. Uh, I don't know if Tomek remembers. It's going to be uh, 17 and 20. Thank you, Tomek. Yes, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we are going to announce them fairly soon. OK, any more questions? I think uh, uh, I have. Uh, we have three more minutes. I, tr I tried to rush a little bit through some of those slides. I prepared to lead too many of them. Uh, I hope I made my. So just just to summarize uh, one more thing on the on this so, so the, the the final thought that I have like I really started uh, the journey and and was going through the journey of open source with thinking about like mostly about contributors being part of the community but actually the the users and different kinds of users uh, or committers and PMCs they are also like their expectations and their values and their uh, motivations are super important. And like, it's 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 very easy to forget about uh, those other uh, community members. And it's easy, very difficult to make sure that uh, like by one person to address all the needs. But if we have different kinds of people that address all those different kinds of con contributors we have, or uh, sorry, community members we have, and each of them focuses on a uh, different area, that makes that can make our life much easier, and especially if the others are understanding that the other part or the other community members are also important, and let them, uh, you know, be addressed by the other people. I think this is this is the learning I have that it's sometimes very difficult to understand that if you have your focus on your part and you don't see the other, uh, uh, it's it's sometimes difficult to accept someone's decisions. But if you do accept that, okay, let this person do the work. Uh, 
that might have a, a great result because this way you can address all the different needs by all the different kinds of community members. Should the project use a mailing list from the beginning? I think so. Like for the Apache Software Foundation, it's super important uh, to have uh, public communication and DevList is a very good thing for, uh, for that. Although I think DevList has some, some limits in the way who is contributing. Uh, so being able to contribute in other places like Slack and uh, like discussions on GitHub or issues, GitHub issues is also super important. And uh, but 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 yeah, I, I do agree that like bringing uh, the decisions back to the to the to the dev list is super important for um, uh, for the project to uh, to be like open and transparent so that everyone can see what's going on. Everyone can can participate in that if needed. Uh, and those decisions are captured. The decisions are captured that even if, if they are taken somewhere outside, uh, sometimes they, they should be brought in and 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 discussed there. So I think it's it's super important for Apache software projects uh, uh, to to be on the dev list from the from the day one. All right, uh, I think the the time is up. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for the opportunity of speaking at the at the Apache Con to all the, the Apache Con organizers. That was really great. Uh, that I could do that after last year visiting Apache Con Berlin. Uh, uh, this is my first time when I'm speaking at the main stage. <laughs> that was really good, a good, great opportunity. Okay. Thank you very much.